Hello, my friends, it's Ron here. I'd like to read you a short story, and I'm calling this From Russia with Hope. And it's a short story called Christmas by Russian author Vladimir Nabokov. And it's a literary gem that for me, I hope for you, addresses the temptation that we have to despair when grief overshadows hope whether on a stark winter's day or some unexpected Christmas in July. The story begins. Constrained with grief over the death of his young son, Slepsov, the main character in Vladimir Nabokov's short story Christmas, considers suicide. The day after the child's funeral, as the story goes, Slepsov's son brings his son's coffin, weighed down, it seemed, with an entire lifetime, to its final resting place in the family vault near their summer home in the countryside. Finding no solace in being near the entombed body of the boy and bone cold in the frigid winter winterscape, Slepsov treks back to the thinning light of the unoccupied summer mansion and walks through the room's shrouded furniture, mute chandeliers, and the only light is from the flame of his kerosene lantern, overshadowing the walls in the solitary figure. Arriving in the study, Slepsov sets the lamp on the desk and opens a wooden box that holds his son's treasures, a butterfly net, a biscuit tin with a pear-shaped cocoon, a spreading board for mounting butterflies, and the boy's notebook. As the father reads the son's daily entries of the summer's past, hearing them, hearing in them the beloved young voice now stilled, his grief crescendos. It's at this point he realizes what will end this earthly life that lay before him, totally bared and comprehensible and ghastly in its sadness, humiliatingly pointless, sterile, and devoid of any miracles. It's at this point Slepsov decides to end his life. Just then he hears a sudden snap, a thin sound like that of an overstretched rubber band breaking. The grieving father looks up and sees that the cocoon in the tin has burst its tip and a black wrinkled creature the size of a mouse crawling up the wall above the table. Before his eyes, the Atticus moth that had lain dormant inside its taunt, leaf, and silk envelope slowly unfurls its great black and purple wings, emerging now because of a thin shard of warmth from the lantern's light. The moth, Rising finally under the power of those wings, takes a full breath under the impulse of tender, ravishing, almost human happiness, as does Lepsov himself. Nabokov writes between the remaining lines, who only moments before felt inextricably bound in his own kind of cocoon. In this seemingly impossible scene, the metamorphosis of a moth and of a man in the dead of winter and of grief, hope transcends despair, a spirit bereft of the comfort rekindles and a miracle unfolds. In Nabokov's story, you might say that the one in the darkness sees a light, however fragile even as those at the first Christmas saw a light emerging at just the right moment, a light that overcame the darkness. 
Another writer writes and reveals a light that is the life of men, through whom all things were made. We see that, of course, in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, including cocoons that release extraordinary creatures, hearts that can change of a sudden, and hope that revives grieving spirits. And once again, the glory of the Lord unfolds. The word and the word today on this topic that comes to my mind is from the life of Joseph, one of the patriarchs, who was himself besieged in various ways until his deliverance. And then positioning by God to help others, it goes like this. Joseph said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. You see that in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. This Christmas, my friends, let the words of Joseph recorded in Genesis and above Nabokov in his uh, short story, and he who is the author and finisher of our faith, and that thing which is our hope, encourage and refresh you. The world is not likely to get any better soon, we know that. We need words of hope and encouragement, and he from whence they come as never before. Because, my beloved, we are not made for the evil ones, but for such a time as this in God's plan. We were crafted with intention by he who beckons us, arms outstretched, offering hope of deliverance from what evil would wreak havoc. Out there, and perhaps even here, Hope that begins, perhaps surprisingly, even now. Merry Christmas, and I hope you have a blessed day, my friends.